my precious brother who came to uh, pick me up. I believe it's brother Samuel. I uh, could bless him. I want to salute the elders that are here. And uh, I want to thank you in advance for your amen. Because uh, that's what will keep me going. Amen. So let's uh, just open our Bibles. Uh, as we are opening our Bibles, my name is uh, Brother uh, Freddy uh, Chireka. Uh, originally from Zimbabwe. Uh, but I am now based in uh, South Africa, Johannesburg. So I come here because of work. And uh, I also bring you greetings from my family. They are aware that I'm here. And uh, the Lord has also given us a small uh, congregation in a place called Sakane. Sakane means joy. Uh, so I also bring you greetings from Joy Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm happy uh, to, to move from Joy Tabernacle to Peace Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm happy that all our tabernacles are named after the name of the place. And which is a good name also. And no wonder I came and Tapana won Saran to Ido. I didn't see Nalam Maro, Chidochi to Chapin of Amenito. So I'm um, not so much of a preacher. In Ayo City, they were a good movie. Although at home they call me pastor, Gakari Kunumba Mandicham Busa, I'd like just to share a few scriptures with you. In Gafano Gavira Napondino Maremba Mono and Maybe a few quotations, a few testimonies. Then we go home. Uh, while we are standing, so that you can be seated, let's open our Bibles on Psalms 103. So when I was aware that I have to come and share here, I was praying to say, Lord, what is it that I can say to a church that is well taught? I listened to the sermon that uh, Pastor Mwanza was preaching in Nigeria. I was so blessed. And you people, you've got a wonderful pastor. The word was preached with much power. But I didn't know what to say to a church like that. Hallelujah. Let's read our Bible so that we can sit down. Psalms 103. Uh, maybe five verses uh, there. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities and, and heal all thy diseases? Amen. Amen. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Amen. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who, who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like an eagle. May God bless the reading of his words. We have prayed, we can sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. 
I'm so happy to be here in Zambia. And I'm particularly more happy to be here in church. Because the prophet uh, that we all believe, he said that when it's evening time, a believer thinks about God. So you can go wherever you go, do whatever you do, but when it's evening time, a child of God comes to church. And I'm so happy with uh, the attendance in church and I believe that uh, being a midweek it's a sacrifice to come to church and uh, my prophet tells me that wherever there is a sacrifice there is a blessing so I want to tell you brother sister that tonight because you made a sacrifice to come into the house of the Lord. There is a blessing for you. Hallelujah. Not from me. I'm limited. Not from the interpreter. Not from any human being. But from Almighty God. There is a blessing for you. Hallelujah. And I trust that God will lift this service so that it passes by you. And I believe that you are ready. And you say, Lord, as you are moving by, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. I don't want to go back home the same way I came to church. If you came to church sick, I've got good news for you. There is a blessing for you. He is Jehovah Rapha. He heals all diseases. Not some diseases. He heals all diseases. He can stabilize high blood pressure. He can heal sugar diabetes. He can heal cancer. He can heal migraine headache. Hallelujah. He can also heal female issues. I mean, he heals all manner of diseases. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we are on there, I will just share a few testimonies. Yes, the Lord will lead. And uh, the testimonies that I'm sharing, I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily the way I was involved. As long as I know that God did a certain thing, if in the life of another minister, I'm going to share it. But as I'm sharing those testimonies, I want to tell you something. That one testimony, it gives to another testimony. So if I testify about something that you are going to then you can say, Lord, one testimony gives birth to another one. And may you have your own testimony. Hallelujah. There was an elderly sister there in Zimbabwe in the, in the place called Nyanga. Manika Lane. Hallelujah. Uh, she She's a widow woman. And uh, she loves the Lord. The Lord has blessed her with a good house. And the Lord has blessed her with good cars. And uh, she was hosting ministers. As the ministers are coming to preach, she had a big home. So she said to the pastor, Let me be able to host the ministers. And and don't worry about what they will eat. Don't worry about where they will sleep. That's the part that I will do for the Lord. Will you do something for the Lord? The Lord will do something for you. Hallelujah. If you are stingy, God will be stingy on you also. God loves a cheerful giver. Even if you don't have money, you can offer 
offer to clean the chairs. You can offer to clean the chairs. You are doing something for God. And God will bless you for that. So our sister, she was suffering from a high blood pressure and a sugar diabetes. So she couldn't eat certain foods. She couldn't do certain things because of her condition. And then one minister visited there. And after being, uh, you know, well kept in the home of the sister, she then said, Sister, what can I, what can I do? What can I pray for you? I can't give you a home. You have a big home. I can't say God give you a car. You have good cars. But your condition is this health matter here. And uh, the sister was prayed for. And the presence of God came down. The sister was delivered from high blood pressure. Delivered from sugar diabetes. She sent some pictures. When she finished a two liter country. This God that we serve did not stop to heal in the times of brother, brother. He is still healing all manner of diseases. And even tonight, if you came here sick, I want to tell you something. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is a problem in Gilead. It is not God's will for you to be sick. He has got a healing for you. One of the benefits of being a child of God. How many children of God are here? Let me see your hand, children of God. It's your benefit to get healing from God. It's not nice for you to be sick. It's your benefit to be healed. That's why we went to Calvary. That's why he was beaten by the Romans. He was wounded for our transgressions. That's why by his stripes we were healed. And when he didn't go to Calvary, so that we talk about healing, so that we preach about healing, he went to Calvary so that tonight, if you are sick, you can go home healed. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. He is still God who can still heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a dear sister at our church. She's not even uh, that old in the message. But she loves the Lord. And she believes the Lord. She heard us preaching about divine healing. She heard testimonies about divine healing. And then where she stays, she happened to have a neighbor uh, who goes to a Pentecostal church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you something. You are not healed because you are in the message of God. Some of you didn't hear me. You are not healed because you are in the message of the hour. You are healed because you have got faith. Because you are healed. Sometimes you can be a good sister, a good brother, faithful in the things of God. But if you don't project faith, you will still come to church sick. Week after week, month after month, until you die, when there is healing in the church, you have got to believe it. Amen. And it can only come by faith. Brother Abraham says, an unclean woman can walk into the church and hear us preaching about divine healing. She believes it. She will be healed. And she go back rejoicing. And yet believers of the message, they come into the church and go back with the sicknesses because they are too complicated. 
They are complicating it. Don't think too much. Don't try to say how is it going to happen. You just believe your healing. Even as I'm preaching like this, you can believe for your healing. God will heal you. Because the preaching of the word has something for spirits. The preaching of the word is healing to the people. But you have to believe God. So the sister went home yes. and found a neighbor who's not in the message. And this neighbor had a serious case of cervical cancer. And she was bleeding. And it was very bad. And uh, Brother Branham says, We worship God. Not only when we come to church, not only when we pray before or after the service, but we also worship the Lord by going out there and tell the sick people that our God can heal the sick. Our God can save the sick. Brother Abraham says, when you do that, you are worshiping God. So she went to worship God by telling a neighbor that God heals cancer. Is there in the spoken word? Florence Nightingale was healed. Many cases of cancer. So she went and said, even in this day, in 2022, God still heals cancer. How many of us say amen to that? Hallelujah. So she started sharing scriptures. And we were to have some special meetings. By the way, they were in September. And uh, she said, yeah, there, there are special meetings that are happening at our church. And if you believe, you can come. And uh, there will be uh, wonderful preachers and ministers who can pray for you. And uh, your cancer can be healed. Hallelujah. And then uh, they started sharing like that. Then come the days of the meeting. The sister, who, uh, this neighbor who had cancer, did not even make it to the service. But you are here. You are in the service. That one did not make it to the service. And the sister represented her. Even if this one has failed to come to church, I will stand in for her. And receive healing for him. And she did. And one of the preachers who was preaching came to her. And they don't know each other. That minister is from another country. And the minister came and said, Sister, I see cervical cancer. But it's not on you. It's on someone close to you. Go and tell that person. I healed. The husband came with the towel. When we were praying for the different clothes and whatever, she came with the towel. And the, the towel was prayed for. They took the towel. A, a, a neighbor who didn't even come to the same. And that towel was put in place. And she went to sleep. And they prayed and everything. The very night, she said she had a dream. And she saw some animals which is like cell upon cell, like a spider, that is spider with, spider. with many, with many uh, 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 feet moving out of her womb. You have read demonology. You have read demonology. That's what Brother Branham says. Yes, that's what a cancer looks like. And after a couple of days, that neighbor was looking for the pain. I used to have pain. Where is the pain? It was gone. She was healed. And she's not even a believer of this message. I'm challenging you, believer. I'm challenging you, believer. You are not going to go out of sight. Receiving your 
hili I'm challenging you to believe Why we are preaching like this Before we even pray I'm challenging you to believe It's your right Divine healing Children's breath Sicknesses Are demons And demons They want to kill you So if you are sick today You are dying When we were having these meetings, there came a white woman. And I'm not a racist. But if we are in the townships like this, and a white woman comes to this, we are bound to notice it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then she was invited by another sister because she had a health condition. So when she came, while we were still in quiet, she couldn't even sit on the on the chair because she was so sick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She, was, she was almost collapsing. And then the sister that brought her approached the minister and said, uh, you know, uh, this woman, she's so sick. And uh, she needs prayer even before the service starts. And we took uh, another trip. Not even to the office. Not even to a nice place. We laid our hands on her. And we prayed for her. And we said, Sister, go back this And I was, I, I, I noticed it. The service was very long. Five hours. But she never went home before the service. She was entering the world. She was rejoicing. And uh, after two months, I just thought of it. I said, I never got a response to say what happened to that. So we looked for her. And we were told that there was a word of God healed her immediately. On the day when she was praying, it's more than two months now. She has never experienced those symptoms again. And, uh, she was saying that she thought about it deeply. That she could not get healing anyway. But in the house of God. Then she decided after a week that I'm giving my life to the Lord. When she was baptized, and the way she GPS signal lost. Next to a pastor in the message, who is also a white pastor. So God has got his way to do that. She is serving God as we speak. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. And there was another uh, couple. I know them very well. They, want to have been they, been, they were married during COVID. And it was two, uh, 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 two years. So normally uh, these young people when they get married depending on the advice that they get others decide to have children a little bit later so we just thought uh, maybe it's one of those things but it was actually two years after their marriage and then a child was not coming 
side way. And uh, little did we know that they were battling, they needed a child. But there was barrenness in the marriage. Hallelujah. When the meeting started, maybe you know Pastor Chinamasa. He was preaching there. And preaching there. And the people were emailing. And believing the word. And she just says, Sister, I give you a child in the name of the Lord Jesus. I said, Pastor Chinamasa, you don't know the sister. You don't know whether she's married. But how did you? You do that. Oh, mama, she died. Oh, Lord, you did me. And that sister, Mama Mota, came for the first service, which was on Thursday. The service was supposed to start at six days. She arrived at six. He and Abigail about 18 hours, 30 minutes early. But she traveled a distance more than an hour to come to the city. But she was so early. What did I say to you? When you make a sacrifice for God, God remembers. She came to the church. She went back home with the child in the womb. I'm talking to someone. She says, the husband called and said, Pastor, I have good news. I said, what is the good news? She says, we've been to three doctors. And it's all confirmed. My wife is plus or minus eight weeks pregnant. I rushed to the calendar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, stop doubting. Stop doubting. Stop doubting. Believe now. So God has made it in such a way. Your blessings are connected to pastor. You. When the pastor is preaching, if he says, brother, you are blessed, you are blessed. If he says, sister, you are blessed, you are blessed. Tonight, forget not all his benefits. Forget not his benefits. What is benefit number one? He forgives your sins. I think I said it in a mild way. He doesn't just forgive. He forgives your iniquity. Sin is something else. But in it, you did it knowing. You, you, you felt knowing. You were not trapped. It was not a mistake. You did it with your eyes open. He forgives you. You are forgiven, my brother. You are forgiven, my sister. At your earliest opportunity, if you have got things that are hidden, it's your earliest opportunity. Go to your deacons. Go to your pastor. Talk about these things. Say, Pastor, I'm here to make my life right. I met this, I did this, I did this. I'm here to make my life right. The amens are getting fewer. Amen.
Yes. Don't stay as a Christian with some uh, uh, dead bones in your cup. Okay. One of the benefits you have is that God forgives your iniquities. He wants you to confess. Don't wait to be caught. Because you can be caught. We are getting into a time that if you do things that are wrong out there and you come into the church one day the spirit of God will pick you out by a man sisters who are you are busy kissing out there to perish it's not something that's going to happen in the future this is happening now. Some yes. months ago, yes. I was preparing to preach at church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And yes. then I had a subject and I had my scriptures and everything. And I just stood behind the Bible. I felt the presence of a demon in the church. And I was failing to uh, to, to speak on my subject. And I said, if there is someone in here who is not living right, quick, make that thing right. If you are a brother, come to see you. the brother or the deacon. The pastor. Amen. If you are a sister, go and see my wife. Because some of these sisters, when they repent, the issues are just too much. And a brother cannot hear. GPS signal lost. Go to talk. Go and talk to Mom Fundis. No one came. No one came. And I said, but I felt it. There was a demon in church. Two weeks down the line, the person who was responsible for it looked at me and said, Pastor, that was me. The very night before, I really said, I'm not fit to be called a brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you are people who have the privilege of being forgiven your sins. Don't wait to be caught. Don't wait for God to pull out your hands. Because He's doing that. Repent before you are caught. That's what I call real repentance. Yes. Say, I'm repenting because you are caught. Calm yourself and you make your life right. When you make your life right, then there will be victory. When you repent and you confess, God can give you the Holy Ghost to overcome that problem. When you really repent, God can heal you of your sins. When you really repent, God can give you a job. God can give you a real because your problem is sisters. God gives you a real We have young people here. The youth, let me see you. God bless you, young people. I'm, I'm taking a ten to Samaria. God knows what you're going to do. God knows your passwords. God knows your phone. God knows all the folders that you have in your phone. God knows everyone that you talk to. God knows even the things you hide from yourself. God knows everything about you. from pornography. Pastor will help you. You keep it a secret. That thing is going to swallow you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be open to your basket. Be open to your chicken. They will bring with you. Because we know that God knows the challenges you are going to do. You need to overcome you need the real Holy Ghost to live a clean life. You need the real Holy Ghost to overcome the pressure of your flesh. Don't live a double life. Amen. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. I can take you to your first Samuel chapter 3. Samuel Wayamba chapter 3. Just quick, quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were having a meeting some uh, three weeks back or four weeks back. And we were preaching to the young people like I'm doing. The last service. They are coming, they, I need a car, I need a new job, I need to marry, I need this, those with the request from the youth. And God says, buy a divine gift in the church. There was a prophecy in the church. Many people no longer believe those things. And God still speaks. And he says, you young people, you were wanting this and that and that and that. But you are carrying a baggage of sin. God cannot bless on top of sin. Go out of the building right now and make your life right to the people. People remained seated. And the Spirit of God came out now with anger. He says, You are still seated. I know you by name. Because you are giving you a last warning. If you don't go and make out your life, I will call out your name and the things you are doing. And I was closing my eyes in respect of the prophecy. And there was a band behind me. That was fake and it was all you. Someone had a guitar, someone had a keyboard, and I said, give me a key. Nothing the key. And there was no key. Huh? Everyone knew the music said. They ran out. But I opened my eyes to check the music. There was less than 10 people. Out of a, con- a youth camp of more than 120. People rushed outside. Amen. Children of the pastors, children of ministers, children of the elders, they all ran the making their lives right. And when we started talking to them, when the Spirit of God said, I know your name and what you are doing. If you don't stand up, I'm going to say the things in public. Most of the young people, they had their names being called in their hearts. God says, I will call your name. What's your name, sister? Naomi. Naomi. So when the Spirit of God says, I will call out your name. Naomi who seated. Naomi who hear God saying, go out now. And they will go in. Making their lives. Now let me give you a scripture about it. God loves you uh, and he wants you to repent. You will never have a victory with people who hide their sins. And when you confess, don't say, ah, master, things are difficult, I'm just struggling, things are tough, pastor. How tough are they? And where are you feeling? If you are a brother, and your problem is pornography, we don't want to see you hanging around the sister. You are busy seeing horrible things. We can trust you with our daughter. 
Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you something. Amen. That was energy. Is a story to put the point that I'm putting. This man, or this boy, suddenly when he's coming from battle, he realizes that at the back here, he is growing a tail. Do we, do we get that? There is a tail that is. Growing. He says, Yeah. This tail. This is my, maybe it's just a little thing. Ah, maybe Check it after one week. It's, it's now 10 centimeters. So just think one week 10 centimeters. Next week 20 centimeters. After a month. This thing. Everyone will know about it. Amen. So the boy decides to go away. To the doctor. But he's ashamed to tell the doctor that the tail growing. He says, Doctor, I'm just not feeling it. What's the problem? My whole body. I don't know what you have here. The doctor says, Okay, drink this painkiller. And then he goes there. But the problem is not just pain. The problem is the what? The Don't tell the doctor. The doctor does then address the tail. Three weeks down the line, the tail is growing. Now you realize it's a serious matter. Come to the doctor. You don't wait for the doctor to tell you. Take off your jacket. Doctor, 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 I have a problem. There is a tail here. And if the doctor gives you painkillers, he doesn't love you. The doctor must say, okay, I'm booking you to the, appointment. to the theater, private room, and I'm not going to come with injections or painkillers. I'm coming with sharp knives because we must cut for the Amen. Certain habits. That you are having are like a tail growing slowly, slowly. As long as you hide them, they keep on growing. But if you want to get rid of them, come we have got sharp knives of the word of God. The word of God is sharp. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you can reach a state where even if you come to God, God won't want to listen. You heard me. Amen. Now, first Samuel chapter 3. We know Samuel. She was a miraculous child. The mother was barren. And uh, she went to church to fast and pray. Did you hear that? Fast and what? This prayer that we make when we want to eat food. And even yourself, you are not serious. Because, you, because, because you are hungry. You want to eat. You can't live on prayers like that. When you really want a breakthrough, you have to put food aside and fast. Hallelujah. Because when you do that, God takes you serious. I know the quotation. This is a quotation. We say God puts a fast on you. I, I know it very well. But the, the kind of Christians that we are having today, the whole year from January to December, God never put a fast on you. 
There's a problem somewhere. Because Jesus said, there are certain things that won't move unless you fast. Amen. When I'm attacking your food, now you don't want to say amen. When we talk about cars, houses, all I know, when you say fast and pray, the amen is after Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, Eli uh, was the high priest. He was getting old. And his eyes were no longer seen. And the Bible says the, the word of God was precious. In other words, the way God operates, it was no longer something that is known. Amen. Amen. The, the, the spirit and the manifestation of the spirit was dead in the church. People were only saying, yes, it happened in Moses, things happened there, but in their, in their age, nothing was happening. Amen. Like today, and I like what Pastor was preaching in, uh, in Nigeria, believing that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If we find ourselves saying, Brother Branham said, this, it's wonderful. Brother Branham did that, it's wonderful. But he's no longer doing it today. Then something is wrong. If God did something with Brother Branham and we preach what Brother Branham preached, then God must do what he did with Brother Branham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, God started coming to early at, uh, at, at, to Samuel at night. And God was calling Samuel. Hmm? Sunday school. Sunday school. Does God have a mouth? God Sunday school. A Sunday school. Does God speak? God Anyone from Sunday school? Can I say say Sunday school. Does God speak? God He does speak. Amen. Does he have ears? God he can hear. Amen. Okay, let's help Sunday school young people. Does God speak? God does he hear? God he speaks through the songs. Amen. He hears your prayer. That's why sometimes you are having a problem. And you can't pray that to church. The preacher just comes straight. God heard your prayer. And he is using the ministry. He uses the preacher. And most of the times he uses the pastor. to speak to you. But he can also use other ways. He can actually speak directly. He can do that. And he was doing that to Samuel. He came and said, Samuel. And Samuel was told these things are no longer happening. So he wakes up. He runs to the high priest. Uh, high priest, and you call him. He says, ah, no, I think you were having a bad dream. Go back. And then God came again. Samuel. And he ran to Eli. Then Eli realized that God is speaking lip to ear with Samuel. Says when he comes again, stand up on your feet. Lord, here I am. Speak to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God does still speak. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul and Brother Brennan, they say that each local assembly is supposed to have nine spiritual gifts where God operates because God is the shepherd. We were praying at church. 
one day, si mozi, and I can tell you we are having a revival. How do I know we are having a revival? People are coming to church two hours before Two hours before quiet time. On Sunday, obviously, people are working in Midweek, Two hours before. And there's a group that we pray with in private. And when we were praying, Holy Ghost came in there and said, Go and help a certain, certain brother. And also tell him that divine healing is for him. Yeah. When we finish praying, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We rush to call the young brother. Energetic young man is helping in the church. And I was wondering, what is the opportunity? That we need to help him. When I called him, I started speaking to him. Hello, how are you, brother? How are things at home? When I just say, how are things at home? He's like breaking down. He wants to cry. He says, Pastor, how do you know? Why are you asking me that question? Because I left uh, home in a very bad state. My parents are unbelieving. We had a very big trouble at home. Today. As in the morning. Amen. And Amen. the father is a drunkard and, uh, and, and, and he, he really attacked this young man and said all kinds of words. Until the young man says, there is no use for me to leave. It's better I take my life. So he took tablets. And he went into a room. He was about to commit suicide. But a certain power entered that room. Threw the tablets down. And tell him to go to church. When we are in the church, the Holy Ghost says, Go and help my boy. Some of you are not believing. So I won't comment more on that. But God is still doing that. And I've seen him doing it. And we start to say, no, 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 don't think of killing yourself. Brother, sister, don't think of killing yourself. For evil spirits. You kill yourself, you wake up in hell. And you live good food here. You live the chicken here. You live nice cars here. You live beautiful sisters here. And you kill yourself. Only to go to hell. So if you are here and the devil is giving you a of suicide, if you accept that, you are a coward. You are a coward. You are a coward. You are running away from troubles. God never said you never have troubles. God never said you never be sick. God never said you never be broken. But he says out of all your troubles, God will deliver you.
But he never told the people that I am blind. And when he was praying for a man at the bed, the preacher behind the pulpit said, Hold him, you are him. That became his confession. Wait a minute, people. I am him. I can see. serious with the things of God. He had two sons. 
uh, what are the names of those sons? Bofni and Phineas. And uh, they were misbehaving in the house. When people bring, uh, you know, flesh for the sacrifice, they were taking the most uh, nice part of the steak. And they were going for a bride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they were starting dating girls in the church. And uh, Eli was not correcting them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God was so angry. And he says, even if you come to repent, as for you, Eli, in your house, I'm not going to forgive you. Amen. Because you have crossed the line. Amen. Hallelujah. And that was the first prophecy that Samuel was given. When Samuel, uh, when Eli came to ask the prophecy, Samuel was afraid. Samuel said, no, tell me if it's the Lord, it's the Lord. Yeah, we need to remind the devil that we will still preach. Whether the electricity or whatever we preach until we are done. Because someone must be blessed. Someone must be corrected. Someone must be encouraged. Someone must be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now. The prophecy that God gave to Samuel was fulfilled in the next chapter. The next chapter, there was a war with the Philistines. And the house of Eli, those boys, they went to war. And they even took the ark of the Lord. And they died in that war to fulfill the prophecy that was given. And when Eli heard that they have taken the ark of the Lord, he was a big man, seated on a high chair. He was waiting for the news. He said, what happened at the wall? So one coward came. Why do I call him a coward? Others were dying in bed. This one ran away. Coward. But he came to give the news. Your sons are dead. People have died in thousands. When that messenger told Eli that even the the uh, the ark of the Lord has been taken. Right there, when Eli heard that, he fell from the high chair, broke his neck, and died there. Hallelujah. God judges sin. Don't wait for God's judgment. That's why the Bible says, judgment begins in the house of God. Repent in the house of God before God starts weeping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe it was the wife of uh, Phineas. When she heard the husband is dead. And the brother in law is dead. Many Israelites are dead. Even Grandpa Eli is dead. She went straight into labor. But with a heart attack. And then she bore a son. The only thing she was able to do before her, even herself died. Was to give a name to the son. Ikabod. For the glory of God has departed. Believers. Peace be Peace be Hear me and hear me very well. Don't allow the glory of God to depart. By unconfessed sins. But there was a man by the name Samuel. He was connected to the other dimension. And he led the people to repent. And when he led the people to repent, they were now repenting, uh, making rights. He took a lamb, started offering to the Lord. And the Philistines, 
They thought that they won over Jehovah. Jehovah has never lost a battle. You can lose a battle. But God doesn't lose a battle. If you are out of position, the devil will whip you. When you are back in position, you are more than a conqueror. The Philistines came when the church was on fire. When people were living their lives right. Samuel was to offer them to God. The Philistines thought we can attack them at their own power. But they didn't know the shout of the king was in the camp. Like tonight, the shout of the king is in the camp. Victory is in the camp. Sickness comes from the devil. And God comes to cast it out. God comes to cast it out. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me just find a few things as we are coming to a close. Hallelujah. It's your benefit to be healed. It's your benefit to live a good life. It's your benefit to eat good food. It's your benefit to have a good house. It's your benefit for this tabernacle to have its own plot. Where you build your own church. It's your benefit. I want to share a testimony. I'll close with a few testimonies. Is that you the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you become a Christian, God gives you an open check. That whatever that you need, you can write it on the chair and sign where Jesus is signed with his blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all you need to do is to have ambition to sign 
and whatever you sign, God is obligated to give it to you. I was preaching like that a couple of years ago. There was a contractor, a big contractor in the church. He says, Pastor Chireka, I believe it. I said, that's good. But if you believe it, write it down. He says, yes, Pastor. I said, what did you write? He said, 70,000 rand. I need a contract that can give me 70,000 rand, which is almost equal to 70,000 kwacha. I looked at him. I said, do you really believe it? He says, yes, I believe it. I said, if you believe it, why can you add some zero? Ah, pastor. 70,000. I said, some zero. Why you didn't listen? When I said, instead of 70, even if you added one, we are going to be 700. You another one, it was going to be 700. Now you have 700. You what you When you can give a pass, Amen. Amen. Brother Branham says, Imagine a little mouse in the silos of Egypt. Egypt is saying, I will just eat a few grains because the grain can be finished. Brother Branham says, Nonsense! Eat as much as you can. Eat as much as you can. Peace be upon you. There is no limit. On what you can ask God. Ask big things. Ask big things. Ask big things. A doctor in the times of Brother Brandon. He wanted a, a piece of land. And he was praying for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, if you can give me a piece of land, I will use this concrete blocks to build a, 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 a clinic. And he came to Brother Brown. And Brother Brown says, Oh, that's what you want. And he says, ah, These people are so difficult. Maybe I have to arrange a bride for me to get a piece of land. Brother Brown said, No, 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 no. no. In the things of God, we don't do bread. You hear that? In the things of God, don't come and give a testimony. But something you bribe. No, it was not God who gave you. It was your bribe that gave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to repeat it so that you don't act like you did it. God hates bribes. There is scriptures in the Bible. God hates bribes. He is a new bribe. He don't believe that God 
can give you. Would you know what I'm going to pass? Amen. Yes. And, yes, and they said, all right. The banana is coming. All right. Chawin. Let's pray. Tell him, amen. Remember, he just wanted any piece of money. And in his mind, he says, ah, it's cheaper if I build with this uh, concrete uh, blocks that you made the tree of hope. It's cheap. Ah, it's not cheaper. But when God came down, He's not a God of cheap things. I want to repeat it. You can be a cheap person. God is not a cheap person. He does things proper. And uh, Brother Branham saw a vision. GPS signal lost. And, uh, and then he says, the banat. You are not going to just get a piece of land. You are not going to get a piece of land. God is going to give you the land and the beauty. And it's not the way you wanted to go. Here is the thing that God is saying. It's a proper clinic. Clinic with red bricks. Not the concrete blocks. Are we hearing each other? Brother Samuel does say, ah, no. That thing is so expensive. I told you, we do Number two, one is expensive. It's out of my reach. Ah, so if you want to do things that are in your reach, you don't have to pray about it. Just go and do it. But if you are asking God, expect the biggest thing. He says, I have given it to you. A big clinic. Clinic here in full. With the red brick. God has given it. With the red bricks, I have given you that one. My brother, brother, if God could open your eyes and you see the plans he has for you, he has got big plans for you. He has got big plans. Church single head. We tell everyone head This is a small thing. I'm blessed. I can do it. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. God has got big thoughts for you. God has got high ambitions. God wants to bless you more than you are ready for. You are thinking of a structure with concrete blocks. God says no. Red brick. My brick is red. Red brick. My brick is red. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why I'm telling you like that? Even me, I have little faith. We also want to build the table. And I said, now let's use concrete bricks. A preacher from somewhere just came and preached this. God doesn't want those uh, concrete bricks. He wants the red bricks. I said, God, I'm stopping. Because the blocks is one we can do. But when God comes, let us preach. Yes. I have to force you to believe tonight. God has got a high thought on you. Some of you are sitting on the gifts of healing. Some of you are sitting on the gifts of music. Some of you are sitting on the gifts of preaching. Some of you are sitting on Business. There's a Snipers 